All right, welcome to the second part of chapter four, section two. So this is the B part. If you recall last time, we uh, went over the main block elements and went over the four families of the periodic table. Here's the periodic table. We went over this group, the alkali metals. Second group, alkaline earth metals. Then we went over the halogens and finally the noble gases. And so uh, it's important that you know their properties and know some of the things I told you about them. But now let's look at a special element. If you remember last time when we were looking at the alkali metals, I didn't have helium in there, right? And notice it's sitting at the top. This periodic table is, is very similar to yours, but hydrogen always sits on top there. However, it's not um, an alkali metal. All right, and the reason it's not is because it really doesn't have the properties of that metal. Um, it's my understanding that it's there mostly because of the S1 designation, uh, but I'm sure there are some professors out there that probably know a little more detail than that. But let's at least look at some of this uh, amazing element. Now, if you look down here, uh, you'll notice this from hopefully... Uh, our spectrum lab, right? Here's the spectral lines, here's the red, here's that teal, and then there's two violets. If you remember our lab with our spectroscopes, we can only see one of the violet lines. But there's the uh, emission spectrum of hydrogen, and then down here is probably the most uh, famous event that ever occurred with hydrogen, and that is when the Hindenburg blew up. And uh, the Hindenburg was full of hydrogen, and there's been a number of theories on why it went between sabotage and lightning and static electricity, and even Mythbusters spent some time on it. It's a pretty entertaining one. Uh, but that was uh, filled with hydrogen, and it went, and hydrogen is uh, very flammable. So uh, let's look at a couple things about hydrogen. First, it's the most abundant element in the universe. Uh, if you think about all of the water on our planet, and the formula for water is H2O, right? That means for every water molecule there's two hydrogens. The other thing that's uh, very abundant in our universe are the stars. And the stars are made of mostly hydrogen and helium uh, in a ferocious reaction that's occurring all the time, giving off energy. So it is the most abundant element in the universe. Another thing about hydrogen is, and I kind of mentioned this already, it has properties unlike any other element. It really doesn't fit the alkali metals. Um, it's just got its own very unique properties. And so those unique properties um, are the reason that it's not really in the alkali earth metal family. And then last but not least, probably its number one use is used in industry to make fertilizer. And that reaction is called the Haber process, and I'll write it out. We haven't studied reactions yet, but that's okay. You take a little hydrogen, a little nitrogen, you add some energy, uh, and you make some ammonia. Yeah. So if we're going to go ahead and balance this. Okay. So that's um, ammonia, uh, and particularly ammonia nitrate is... Uh, a major fertilizer and as we're trying to feed more people on this planet we need fertilizer to help plants grow even at a better rate than they, rate than they are so that's uh... that's hydrogen uh... let's look at a couple more sections of the periodic table uh... not necessarily families but but particular groups that are important things that i want you to know and one of them is the transition metal section now if you look at my small periodic table right here notice this is this chunk right here in red if i were to look at the big periodic table you can see it's labeled right there transition and that's really from group three on to uh, 12, right? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. 3 through 12, brain fart there. Um, that chunk right there are known as the transition metals, all right? Now, they are reactive, but just not in the respect of being as reactive as uh, groups 1 and 2, all right? But they, they are reactive. I don't want to say they're not reactive. Um, you'll often hear me re refer to these as the D block elements. And if we were to look at the periodic table, remember on your periodic table, you have a, uh, one of these jobbers and it says D block. Okay, so you'll hear me refer them to as the D block or transition metals. You've got to realize it's the same thing. Uh, 
the next thing that's that's kind of interesting about this group right here is they oh I already said that they're less reactive than group one and two okay poor to know in other words uh, we already know some of the properties of the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals and how reactive they are well these these elements in this chunk here are less reactive um, but it's still important stuff there are a number of these elements that are very unreactive okay palladium platinum and gold okay so there's palladium there's platinum and there's gold right there. And sometimes those are called the normal metals. Those are very unreactive metals. So what that means is if you're lucky enough, you can dig into the side of a mountain and find a gold vein and become a rich person. And uh, you can do the same thing with platinum, and I believe you can do the same thing with palladium. Um, but those are very unreactive metals, sometimes called the noble metals. Now probably one of the most unique things about this group, or at least one of the exceptions to the rule, you've heard me say this year, you know, there's a lot of exceptions to the rules, is they don't always have exactly the same electron configuration that we would expect. For example, you remember, uh, you know, when we, were, when we were doing our electron configuration stuff, you know, we were going uh, 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, 3D5, 3D6, and so on, right? Remember that stuff? That exciting electron configuration stuff. Well, with um, the transition metals, it's not quite as uh, nice and tidy. For example, nickel. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing nickel, but it should be right there. I have my pen. I believe that's nickel right there. Yeah, so nickel's right there. We It has an electron configuration that we would expect. We would go uh, 4s2 and then 3d8. All right, we would expect that. And that's the kind of electron configuration that we've done. But look at what palladium does. Look at the electron configuration of palladium. Okay, it's got 4d10. In other words, it puts it puts 10 electrons in that uh, d set of orbitals, and has no s orbitals. Well, why is that? Well, think about that for a second while we look at platinum. Here's platinum. Look at this. Fills up the 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 4f right here, and then has one electron it pulls from it, the the s and then uh, adds to the to the d orbital right well the reason uh it it does they do that i should say is it's energetically d i c favorable now i have heard a number of chemists talk about well you know in this one it makes sense because all the d orbitals are are full and that really when you look at the difference to it between a 5s and a 4d there's really ener uh, energy wise not enough difference to make uh, to make that big of a deal so so the d orbitals are full I've heard over here that every orbital has one electron which is a little more stable than two electrons but I've also heard that uh, honestly chemists aren't really sure but we do know that elements tend to go to their lowest energy state so we have to believe that it has to do with it's more energetically favorable to be in that situation so that's another unique thing about transition metals and then probably one of the things that I like the most about transition metals and I don't have a bullet up here is this part right here they make some very colorful cool colors and these are all different uh, colors of uh, of some of these transition metals you've got the cobalt here and then uh, dichromate and there's chromate nickels green coppers blue and then uh, permanganate purple so they make some really cool colors and you'll see those this year so there's two groups we've, we've talked about hydrogen we've talked about our transition metals 